students how are you hope you all are good this is your science teacher welcome to the class so continuing with the same chapter crop production and management what we have discussed till now so we were discussing the cultivation of crops which involves basic practices so we till now we have discussed the preparation of soil sowing adding manure fertilizers and irrigation okay so now we'll move on to the next step which is protecting from weeds or you can say removal of weeds so removal of weeds now first of all you must know what are weeds the unwanted and the undesirable plants that grow naturally along with the crop plants are called weeds okay and the process by which these weeds are removed from the field without harming the crop plants is called weeding now the question arises why the weeds are needed to be removed from the field so why weeding is to be done now there are several reasons for that weeding is essentially needed because weeds compete with the crop plants for nutrients water sunlight and space and affect their growth badly so what will happen weeds will ultimately affect the yield of the crop so we need to remove that also some weeds produce toxic substances which interfere with the growth of crop plants and thus affect the harvest some of the weeds are poisonous which are poisonous to humans as well as to the domestic animals so basically because of these reasons weeding is to be done okay now weeds are of two types edible weeds and non edible weeds The examples of edible weeds includes chenopodium commonly known as bathua amaranthus which is commonly called chollai and convolvulus which is commonly called as curry and the non edible weeds are wild oat grass etc Now we'll discuss the methods of weeding basically there are four types of methods for removal of weeds first is your manual method second is your mechanical method third is chemical method and the fourth is biological method we'll discuss each method one by one so first of all comes the manual method now what is manual method manual method is the method in which weeds are removed by pulling them out by a hands okay it is a very common method not usually used weeds are just removed by pulling them with your hand for next method is your mechanical method now mechanical method involves the use of some implements okay and what are the implements that may be used they may be harrow rake trowel also known as khurpi you can see in the diagram harrow and trowel these are used for removing the weeds mechanically okay next method comes is your chemical method now for chemical method certain chemicals are used to remove the weeds and these chemical substances which are used to kill the weeds are called weedicides you must have heard of the term and the examples of weedicides are 24d mcpa and butachlor now weedicides are sprayed in the fields to kill the weeds they do not damage the crops spraying of weeds affects the health of the farmers for that the farmer should cover their nose and mouth with a piece of cloth during the spraying of these chemicals so that it is not harmful for their health next method is your biological method in this method some natural enemies of weeds are released in the field which feed on weeds okay and ultimately what will happen they will feed on the weeds and they will destroy them for this we use certain kind of insects for example biological method mein cochineal insect is used to eliminate opuntia from the crop fields and this is basically used in tamil nadu in tamil nadu what the farmers do they put some cochineal insects in their fields to remove opuntia from the crop fields opuntia you all know it is cactus let me show you it with a diagram 
these are your cochineal insects which are feeding on what on the apuntia so these feed on apuntia and ultimately they just kill it out from the field you can see it from the diagram how it the cochineal insect grows on the apuntia the next step in the crop producing practice is harvesting harvesting you might have heard of it you must have learned this in a chapter in your 6th class now harvesting is just simply the cutting and gathering of fully mature crop okay the harvested grains are called produce or crop yield now there are two types of harvesting harvesting can be done manually manually and it can be done mechanically which is done manually is called manual harvesting and the harvesting which is done mechanically that is known as mechanical harvesting now manual harvesting is done with the help of a sickle and mechanical harvesting is done with harvester in manual harvesting some crops like rice and wheat crops these are cut close to the ground by hand using a sickle the crop is collected at one place in the field and allowed to dry in the sun for a few days in mechanical harvesting suppose in large farms it is done mechanically by harvester nowadays a combine is also used which is a combination of harvester and thresher together these are combined in a single machine let me show you some diagrams you can see in the picture the manual method of harvesting which is done using a sickle and the harvester you can see it is used for mechanical harvesting i told you there is a machine which is combined combinedly used for threshing and harvesting this is called as combine now after harvesting certain steps have to be followed after harvesting the crops threshing and winnowing is done you know threshing and winnowing threshing is the process of separating grains from stalks of harvested crops and winnowing is the process of separating the grains from the hay and chaff with the help of wind and also nowadays winnowing is done with the help of winnowing machine so after harvesting first threshing is done and after the crop is threshed then winnowing is done now threshing is done with the help of a, what combine i told you previously combine is a machine which consists of a thresher and a harvest these are combined together in a single machine threshing can also be done manually by striking against a hard surface threshing is also done by animals the harvested crop is heaped on the ground and animals like oxen buffaloes camels etc are made to walk over it in a circle the cattle's feet release the grains from the chaff let me show you the diagrams you can see in it manual threshing threshing by animals and mechanical threshing manual threshing is done by simply beating the crops threshing by animals i explained it and mechanical threshing is done with the use of combine this is winnowing the lady is doing winnowing of grains to separate what to separate the grains from husk and chaff nowadays winnowing machine is also available you can see it in the diagram so this is it for threshing and winnowing next next comes your storage of grains now you know harvested food grains need to be stored safely so that they are protected from fungal diseases rodents and insect pests the freshly harvested grains are have moisture which promotes fungal growth hence the grains are properly dried in the sun the dried food grains are then stored in containers gunny bags or in silos so on a domestic level wheat rice grain etc are stored in some metallic metallic containers and if we talk about commercial level so on commercial level food grains are stored either in gunny bags or in silos and granaries so as i explained storage of food grains is an important task and if the crops are 
to be kept for a longer time they should be kept safe from what from moisture insects rats and microorganisms so the fresh crop has moisture so if freshly harvested grains are stored without drying they may get, they may get spoilt or attacked by the organisms which will ultimately lose their germination capacity so to avoid this before storing them the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture in them and this prevents the attack by the insects pests bacteria and fungi now how the food grains can be stored there are several methods for storage of food grains first is your granaries second is your gunny bags and third is storage of grains in silos now gunny bags are jute bags these are filled with food grains and are stacked in large godowns on wooden platforms they are stored about 10 to 15 cm above the ground and about 70 cm away from the walls the godowns are made free of microbes insects and rodents by spraying pesticides the second method is your granaries it is used in a commercial purpose these are large metal or earthen pots and the silos now what are silos the grain silos are tall cylindrical containers for bulk storage of grains these are used specially by the government agencies like the food corporation of india let me show you the diagrams of granaries gunny bags and silos it will be much clear to you these are your gunny bags these are your silos for storage of grains these are the granaries now next comes the methods of restoring soil fertility now you know by performing the agricultural activities it will what by using weedicides by using fertilizers so ultimately it somehow affects the soil fertility so we need to restore it so that the crop yield is good for next season so for that there are certain methods that needs to be followed first is your fallowing in fallowing a farmer does not grow another crop for next season after harvesting one crop the fallow soil regains the nutrients from the remains of plants and animals by the action of microbes second is how we can improve the soil fertility we can add manures we can add what manures and fertilizers the manures and fertilizers are added to the soil before sowing the seeds or transplanting the seedlings the third is practicing crop rotation now what is crop rotation it is the practice of growing different types of crops in different seasons on the same land on rotational basis to replenish the soil with nutrients for example farmers grow wheat crop alternately with pea gram or groundnut crop these crops are called as your leguminous crop a nitrogen fixing bacterium called rhizobium lives in the root nodules of these plants and by fixing the atmospheric nitrogen this bacterium replenishes nitrogen content of the soil and increases its fertility so next method for improving soil fertility is practicing mixed cropping now what is mixed cropping the practice of raising two or more crops in the same field at the same time is called as next cropping next comes your crop improvement and green revolution have you heard of these terms earlier you might have heard of it now you know population of india is increases at a very fast pace and it has already crossed 1 billion mark so to meet the requirement of such a large population it is essential to increase the food production in our country so besides adoption of above discussed agricultural practices food production is enhanced by introducing certain high yielding crop varieties by developing high yielding disease resistant and pest resistant varieties by developing varieties that are that mature in short duration and improving the quality of crop plants next comes your methods of crop improvement it includes selection introduction hybridization or cross breeding now what is selection selection is basically the 
selection of crop varieties which ultimately gives the higher yield and which are resistant to diseases and pests okay introduction it involves the transfer of plant varieties with desired characters from one place to another or from different parts of the world third is your hybridization or cross breeding by cross breeding two varieties with different desirable characters new varieties are developed by agricultural scientists next comes your green revolution now what is green revolution and who introduced the green revolution so the great improvement in the production of food grains and other agricultural produce during the period 1962 1980 is described as the green revolution in indian agriculture it is also known as golden era of indian agriculture now the green revolution was started by dr m s swaminathan remember you should remember who started the green revolution the green revolution was started by dr m s swaminathan he was an agriculture scientist and it became successful by collective efforts of government agencies scientists and farmer now what is the aim of green revolution the main aim of the green evolution revolution was to increase the production of wheat by modern agricultural practices so during green revolution high yielding dwarf varieties of wheat were introduced from mexico and australia and new varieties of wheat with desirable characteristics were developed by cross breeding methods so the high yielding dwarf variety of wheat which was developed is known as sherbati sonara next comes food from animals so we obtain much of the food from plants and we also obtain food items from animals for example milk wheat meat and eggs honey fish these are all your animal products now milk these are highly nutritious foods meats and egg these are rich in proteins honey highly nutritious food rich in proteins and fish it is also high, highly nutritious and easily digestible food next comes your animal husbandry now what is animal husbandry the rearing of animals on a large scale for food is called as animal husbandry the cows buffaloes sheep etc are reared at farms now important practices of animal husbandry the animal husbandry includes proper feeding of animals proper shelter of animals prevention and cure of diseases in animals and proper breeding of animals these will ultimately lead to good yield of food products from the animals so there are some terms that you should remember first is your apiculture apiculture is what rearing of honey bees to get what to get honey from them next comes your pisciculture which is also called as fish culture it is culturing the fishes in ponds and pools next is your pollute poultry farming poultry keeping is the rearing of birds for obtaining eggs or meat okay so with this the chapter is over i hope you had fun in learning this chapter and i have made the terms very clear to you if you have doubts you can let me know about them so as a homework please read the chapter from your books and in the next session we'll move on to the question and answers dealing with this chapter okay that's it for this session thank you and have a nice day